Hey everybody, back again in the lab this week, and this week's video is all about potential faults that could occur to traffic signal and how you fix them. Now, for reasons of safety and ease of presentation, I'm doing this from the confines of a controlled environment. But these are actual faults that could occur at a signalized intersection. So, let's get right to faults that could occur and how you fix them. Number one, red fail. So one fault that could possibly occur out in the street is a red fail. And a red fail fault is probably the worst verbiage they could use to describe a fault. Red fail does not mean that you have lost your reds or the red has failed of any, of any nature. It means the conflict monitor has determined that the directional movement of a set of indications has not, it's not present. So when I say directional movement, let's pretend this is a northbound movement here, this one and this one. Let's say this is the mast arm, this is a side pole. If I lost both, well, let's use this for example. If I lost both greens here for this direction, it would go into a red fail fault. If I lost both yellows, it'd be a red fail fault. And, or if I lost both reds, it'd be a red fail fault. If it, if it was a pedestrian movement, if I lost both walks, it'd be a red fail fault. So let's see this in action. Let's scroll over here and we're gonna go to the output wires from the cabinet heading out to the traffic signals. And let's see if I can zoom in here. Well, you know what, you, you kind of get the point. I've got those northbound indications that are wired here going to those, we'll pretend those are those two heads. So. We're going to use the greens as the example here. If I pull one green out, so this is going to simulate like a loss that maybe the wire was cut or it had become disconnected. I'm scrolling back over here. You can see here the northbound movement is back up again. I've I have a loss of a green here, but the pole still has a green on. We haven't gone to fault, it's still working, and the signal continues running. That's one of the reasons if, you, if you're ever out driving and you see maybe for the northbound movement, let's say you see a green out, but the other green's still working, about 99% of the time, 95% of the time, it's just the bulb has burnt out. Sometimes the wire has become disconnected, but it hasn't gone to flash, and that's because there, the conflict monitor senses another load on that channel. And it's also another reason why you have redundancy out there on the traffic signals. Uh, one, for safety reasons, you want, you know, if you lose one, you wanna give some kind of indication to the driver. But secondly, if you do lose uh, one of those bulbs, that you don't go into flash, because just try to imagine if you have all those traffic signals, maybe in a city, and you only have one bulb, if it goes out, how many signals would be on flash out there? Anyway, now let's go ahead and put the wire back into its original location. Let's put that green back into its terminal. So we've got both greens put back up. I can squeeze that in there. We're gonna run this thing. Let me reset it. So it's running here. This time, we're gonna go ahead and run the signal like it was. You got both greens again. This time, I'm gonna pull the load switch, which is you remember what a load switch is? It's what takes the inputs of the controller and tra uh, transfers it to an output to the indications that you know that they can use. So that's probably usually about 120 volts. So greens are up there. You can kind of see that over there. I'm going to pull this load switch, which is driving those indications out in the street. Both greens are up. I'm going to pull it. I'm sorry. Yeah, this one. All right, you saw both greens go out. Like I, like I said, the conflict monitor saw a loss of both sets of indications of green. I'm gonna take you up here to the conflict monitor so you can see that, where you at there? Right there, red fail, phase two. So the conflict monitor sensed that loss and put the signal in flash. Number two, conflict. Another fault that could occur at a traffic signal is called a conflict. A, conf a conflict is a, basically, this is one of the easy ones to understand, is you got a conflicting movement that comes on at the same time. 
So right now I have these wired as a T intersection. So uh, this would be now the south, I'm sorry, the northbound. No, it would be the southbound movement. Um, and then you've got your east and west movement. So what we don't ever want happening is to have this green come on at the same time these greens come on. If that would ever happen, your traffic or your conflict monitor is going to put this thing into a fault condition. So let's see this in live action. We got our directional movements over here that are running. They're their east and west movement. Then you have your southbound movement that's going to come up here. We're going to pretend this green, well, we're going to actually force it to come on. We're going to have this green come on the same time as these two greens come on. And I'm going to do that by shorting out the green from one terminal to another, just so you can see it live in action. So let's, we have these both up. Watch what happens here when I short these out. All right, you saw both greens illuminate for conflicting directions. Well, there you go. There's a, there's a conflict. The conflict monitor logged it and put the signal in flash. Number three, dual indication. Now, whereas a conflict fault occurs with conflicting movements, a dual indication involves the exact same direction, but as the dual indication fault describes itself, which is a very good description, dual indication, that means two indications for the same direction have come up. So dealing with this direction here, we'll say southbound, a dual indication here would be if you had a green and a yellow come up at the same time, a green and a red, or a yellow and a red, any of those movements come up, you don't want to confuse the driver to not know how to proceed through an intersection. So let's, uh, how that would occur usually is if you had um, maybe wires had gone bad in the street um, and they're shorting each other out. So when the green comes up, it shorts across the yellow and the yellow comes up at the same time. Um, you could also have a bad low switch that's in the cabinet too. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you here. What we'll do is do the exact same thing. We're going to short out the green and the yellow. And you're going to see uh, the conflict monitor give it a dual indication fault. So let's, let's do that real fast. Here's your green. The yellow came up. And let's come up here and look at that fault again. There you go. Dual indication. You can see down there, we've got a yellow and green on phase eight with that fault. So the conflict monitor is doing its job. You know, it's, I call it the watchdog of the traffic signal. It's, it's making sure that uh, any of these faults occur, we're putting the signal into a red flash condition and keeping it safe for everybody that's driving. So these are three potential faults that you could see at a traffic signal. Next week, I'll go into a little more advanced faults that you may see. Uh, but uh, these are the three ones that usually you see as a traffic signal technician. So uh, once again, I hope this was informative. I thank you all you guys for watching my videos, and I'll see you next week.